Yikutei Alochas, Orachayim, Chelek Beis, Hilchas Netilas Yadayim Lesuda, Halacha Vav, Paragraph Ayin Zayin. Today's shir is dedicated by Mrs. Jeanette Adams in honor of her sister's yard site today, Malka Chaya Bas Rabi and by our friend from New York, Nathan Rudy, for a Rufu Shalema for Yosef Ben Adel. We also have in mind a complete Rufu Shalema for all those that need it. Rav Nelson Zal is discussing the topic of Zimun in Birka Samozayim as it relates to Chapter 7 in the second half of Likud Imran, and as it relates to everything we're talking about here. In the previous year, we spoke in general about the topic of Zimun, that a, a preparation expressing the fact that we want to, we want to bench, mir villain benching, rabbi say mir villain benching, and how that's tied into our topic of heora sarotzayim. Now, Rab Nosson Zal goes into the change that takes place when there are ten people that ate together. Interesting to note that even if all ten didn't eat, as long as seven of them ate, three that didn't eat can answer, can participate. If three of them didn't wash Natila Sedaim, they can participate also. Whereas usually we say that six, six is a majority, if there's six. So the question is, why over here does it require seven? And I remember hearing from Rav Rosenfeld once that one of the answers that was given was, what does it bother you if another Jew eats? But that is the halacha, that as long as there are seven who washed for Hamoitzi, even if there are three that didn't, they can make up a minion, in which case, that when ten people eat together, then when they do the zimun before the Birch HaSamozayim, they mention Hashem's name. They say, Nevorech Eloikeinu Shechalna Mishaloi. Or some people say, Nevorech Leiloikeinu Shechalna Mishaloi. Ubepochais Me'asoro, whereas if there were less than ten people, Osur Lahaskir Hashem Bebirka Sazimun. It's forbidden to mention that word, Eloikeinu, in the Zimun. And Rab Nosson Sal says, Vahadovor Pele. This is very strange. Lechoira. At, at first glance, Madua hechmiru kol kach bebircha sazimun daiko sheloi lahaskir sashem kiim biasora. Why were our rabbis so strict when it comes to bircha sazimun that you're not allowed to say the word eloikenu unless you have ten people? Ki aloi kolechot mi Yisrael maskir sashem bebrocha is kama pomen bechol yoyin. Every single one of us mentions Hashem's name many times in all the brachas we make throughout the day, without a minion. And the majority of them are brachas that we make by ourselves. A person makes a bracha on food. All of those brachas we say eloikeinu. Asher yotzar... And only when it came to the Zimun, there the rabbis were strict that you're not allowed to mention Eloikeinu unless you have ten people. And the rabbis put this in the same category <coughs> as saying Kaddish or Chazor Hashatz or Kedusha, where you must have ten people to be allowed to mention it. What difference is there between Kedusha and Kaddish, those brachas, where there you must have ten people, whereas other brachas where we mention Hashem's name and there's no requirement of ten people. All brachas that a Jew recites are holy. And in the majority of brachas we say Hashem Eloikeinu Melech Oilam. We mention Hashem's name Yud Kevavke and Eloikeinu. So what's the difference? And now Rav Nelson Zal is going to go into a very clear explanation. 
שאין רואים רמויסם בפוחס מהסורו הוא עניין התוירה הנעל. The whole concept of certain items in our prayers in, in Yiddishkeit which are holy to the extent that we're not allowed to say them unless you have ten people, Kaddish, Kedusha, is, is tied into the chapter on Likut Imran that we're dealing with. Shemavoy Hashom, Rabbi Nezal explains over there, She'ikr hisgalus kedushos ha'izborach, hu al yidei klolius ho'olomo yisyachad. That the main significant revelation of Hashem's greatness is when you bring together the worlds, the upper world and the lower world. And the main emphasis there is the fact that we're revealing Hashem's greatness down here, down below, in this materialistic, physical world. Because Hashem has angels and higher level angels. And despite that, The main pleasure of Hashem is the holiness that's sent up to Hashem from this lowly world. And Rabbi Nezal explains over there in that chapter in Likud Imran, and another place that's related to it, I believe he's referring to Torah Yud Beis, the Torah Aye, or the Torah Samach Vav, in the second half of Likut Imran, both of those. That the main revelation of the greatness of Hashem is when the worlds come together, lower world and upper world, that corresponds to the combination of the Aye Mekoim Kivoidoi and the Maloi Choloritz Kivoidoi. That we must bring them together. Because in truth, it's all one. There's only one Hashem. And everything about Hashem is oneness. So there's no two by Hashem. There's no ches, chesed and gvura as we perceive it as being two different things. It's all part of oneness. So when we speak about the worlds that Hashem created, upper world and lower world, it's also, it's all part of the oneness of Hashem. Ube'emes zeh hadovor na sali dey kol echot mi Yisrael kefi avoidosoi. And the truth is, this act of bringing together the worlds is accomplished by each and every single Jew based on their ser- how we serve Hashem. By every single blessing that we recite, every single prayer that we recite. And through every piece of Torah that a person learns or fulfills. Shekifi avoidosoi bozeh based on how we serve Hashem down here in this world, we draw the divine presence of Hashem down, and we connect ourselves above, and we reveal the, the existence of Hashem, the presence of Hashem in the world. However, there's no comparison between an individual person who blesses Hashem or sanctifies the name of Hashem versus a large group of people. Because the revelation of holiness in a big way to the point where we're able to arouse all the upper levels and the lower levels to sanctify Hashem's name together, that can only be accomplished when you have ten people. That's what the Gemara means when the Gemara says that any item of holiness, we are not allowed to recite with less than ten people. 
udvorim shebigdusha, what types of items of holiness are we referring to? Heim kegoim kedusha, for example, the kedusha that we say in Shmon Esrei, she'ikar gedulas ma'alosa, where what's so special about that kedusha? Masha oz oimrem beferish, the fact that we say very clearly there, the koiren lechol dore mala, and we, we, we call out to all those on the highest levels, she'ikachu shmoyis borachimonu, that they should join with us in sanctifying the name of Hashem. Together with us, Hadore Mato, we who are down here below, Yacha, together. <clears throat> As we say in the Nusach Svad, Nakdishoch v'na'aritzoch kenoyam siach soid sarfei kodesh. Hashem, we will sanctify you and praise you like the sweet sounds of how the holy angels do. Again, we're making reference to them that we're going to do it the way they do it. V'chein b'kdushas keser. And so too in the keser that we recite on Musaf, on Shabbos, on Yantif, on Rosh Chodesh, she'koylolim b'yoyser shneim yachad. There we really bring together upper and lower. Dore ma'la v'dore ma'ta. V'oimrem, we say, keser yitnu l'cho Hashem alekeinu, ma'lochem ha'moyne ma'lo, imam cho Yisrael k'hutzei ma'ta. Hashem, we will give you a, we are crowning you, the angels, the multitude of angels above, together with your nation below. And then we say, Yachad, together, Kulam Kedusha L'choy Shaleshu, all of us will present will, your, your holiness. Va'oz Tzrichem Asoradaika. Then, when you want to join together upper and lower with this type of magnitude in this major way, it requires ten. Ki i efshe lefarsem kidushosei borabim lechol dore ma lo umato o lekolom yachad kim kishiesh asor on Yisrael yachad. Because it's impossible to really publicize in, in a large audience to all those that are in the upper level and all those that are in the lower level and to bring them all together unless you have ten. Ki iker haklolius hu lichloil bechinas hasogas aye o malo yachad. Because the real bringing together, the real getting all of this to get to, together is the combination of aye mekoim kevoidoi and maloi choloritz kevoidoi. Aye mekoim kevoidoi is the way that the people on a very high level refer to their relationship with Hashem, that they realize that even though they're so advanced and so high, they still don't see anything. Where is Hashem? They're saying, where is Hashem? And the people who are on a very low level, they're the ones who have been taught by the tzaddikim to know that Hashem is everywhere. And no matter how far down you are, Hashem is right there with you. This is the ultimate, awesome, great holiness of Hashem, the sosim vegonis, which is extremely hidden, shehu <coughs> bechinas aye, that's the concept of aye, where is Hashem? When do you say where? When you don't see something. Bechinas ma, bechinas keser, as we spoke previously, bringing that together, im tachlis kedusho ha with the lowest, lowest level of holiness, shehu bechinas malchus, Bechinas maloi choloritz kevoidoi. The concept of malchus, which is the lowest one of the midos of Hashem, where there the message is maloi choloritz kevoidoi, that Hashem is everywhere. We know there's a statement that the Gemara makes, beroiv om hadras melech, that the more people that join together, the greater the respect for the king, the greater the respect for Hashem. So here again, there's little league and there's major league. There's small and huge. Every single Jew, we said, through every mitzvah that we do, every tefillah that we say, we're involved in bringing about a union between upper and lower. However, when we want to do that large scale, then you need the 10 people. Then you need 10 people. When, we, when you want to get the entire Dore Mala and the entire Dore Mata together, then you need a minimum of 10 people. Question, Rav. Um, if, if in order to accomplish this, we need the, the unity, 
then maybe the, are there any thoughts as to why maybe not 11 might be a better number than 10 because we talked about how Ketoret was the inclusiveness that Ketoret brings together the, the Rashaim. Good question. A person would say that when we learn about the greatness of Torah, what makes Torah so special is the fact that there are 11 spices, 10 representing holiness, and the 11th representing the integration of the unholy, those who are furthest away. The answer is that everything has its time and place. And here again, this is where not everything is always rational and logical on our level. When a person learns Torah, all levels of Torah, Pshat, Remez, Rusoi, you find out why the Torah, that item specifically, could be 11. Other things must be 10 rather than, but in other cases, the 10 is better than 11, you know, in certain cases. Will we discuss later why the number 10? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Rab Nelson Zal now is going to go into a little bit of a deeper discussion on the topic of 10. Vezeh Yodua. Rab Nelson Zal says, and this is a known fact to those who study Kabbalah or Hasidus, Shem Bechinas Aye, Ad Bechinas Maloi, Heim Bechinas Eser Tikunim. That from the level called Aye, which is the Keser, all the way down to the level of Maloi, which is the Malchus, there are ten levels. Shehem Eser Sphirin, which are known as the ten Sphirois, Shehem I Keser Ad Malchus. Vialkein, and this is why we see something very unique in this chapter in Likut Imran, chapter 7 in the second half of Likut Imran, that you don't see anywhere else just about in the entire Likut Imran, that Rabbi Nezal says, after he completed the Torah, he says at the end there, that in this chapter of Likut Imran, we cover all ten spheroes, as is known in the discussion that Rabbi Nezal had after he gave that shir. And it's specifically when through all ten of these tikunim that it enables us to really join together all of the worlds. Remember in the story of the Baltfila, the famous, famous story that Rabbi Nezal told in Sipurim Isis, the 12th story, where that story in a very obvious way speaks about tikkun ha'olam, about a group of people who their mission is to repair the entire world, even the country that was steeped in the desire for money. And the whole last section of the story deals about the Baltfila gathering together the 10 people of the king gathering together the ten of the king's men in order to be misakein the entire world. And Rab Nosan Zal, in Likuti Allah in explaining the story there, shows again that this is the concept of a minion, that when you get ten Jews together, it's an incredible power, very, very powerful. We've mentioned in the past from the Tikkun Ezoyar, that the Tikkun Ezoyar shows we see this mathematically, that when you have one person, one person is one to the power of one. When you have two people, the second person isn't one anymore. He's, he, he, made the, he made it into a group of two. So the second person is two times two, three times three, four times four. The Tikkun Ezer says when you add up those numbers till 10, including 10 times 10, it's Bigimatria 385, which is Shekhinah, the divine presence of Hashem. And again, that's why the Gemara says, Ein kedusha poches miyud, that you don't really have the full measure of holiness until you have ten. The Alkane, back inside, the Alkane, Srichina Soromi Yisroelazer. And this is why this requires ten Jews. The Ein Oimrim Dover Shabikdusha Kozer. And we don't recite this 
type of a holy statement, Shehu Likroi Ula Oirer Es Kol Dore Mala, where we're inviting all those on the upper levels, all the angels and everyone, Sheyekatshu Shmoyis Borach, that they should sanctify the name of Hashem, Im Kol Dore Matoyachad, together with all those on the low level, that cannot be done, Ki Im Basora, unless you have a minimum of 10. Shehem Klulim Mikol Ho Eser Tikunim Kanal. They represent and encompass all ten tikkunim of Keser, Chochma, Bina, Chesed, Gvura, Teferis, all the way down to Malchus. V'oz daiko yechoylen lichloil kol ha'oylomois yachad b'shleimus. And this gives us the ability to bring together all of the worlds to an incredible level of shleimus, completion. Shezeh ho'ikar, that's the main thing. Vegam borchu, and also the, the, the sentence borchu es Hashem amavoyrach in Myriv or in an aliyah to the Torah, she'oimrem daiko basora, which we only can recite if there's ten people, who gam kein bebechin asanal. That's also in this category. Kiaf al pi she'onu oimrem kol birchas hashachar u birchas kriyeshma beyochid, because although we are allowed to recite. All the birchas hashachar, ashenosan lasech vivino, shaloy asani goy, shaloy asani ovedjo, and and the brachas of kriyashma, we're allowed to recite those even when we don't have a minion. Avu kisharoitzim lo oirer ulefarsim shmo yisborach. But when we want to turn up the light, and when we want to publicize, when we want to go public with praising Hashem, the loimar borabim. And to say publicly, Sheyevorchu Shem Hamavorach, that they should all bless Hashem, Srichin Asora Daika, then you must have a minimum of ten. Kize Nikra Dovor Shebiktusha Shein Oimrem Bepochas Piasora. That's what the Gemara is referring to when it says you're not allowed to recite a Dovor Shebiktusha with less than ten. What do you mean? There's many Tvarim Shebiktusha we write. No, no, no. I'm talking about a Dovor Shebikdusha on a global level. That's what I'm talking about. Where you're trying to bring together upper and lower globally. Big time. Big, big time. Even though every individual Jew with every individual brach and mitzvah is bringing together upper and lower, but that's on a baby level. That's small time. Kilo oirer ulohokitz rabim because in order to activate and, and arouse a large group to bless Hashem, Shebohem Kulim Dorimala Vidorimata, we're included in this large group. They represent upper and lower. This requires specifically a minimum of ten. So they can bring together the Aye and the Maloi, the Keser and the Malchus. Even though, remember, in reality we said it's all one. The words Keser and Malchus are synonymous. In the Megillah it says, Keser Vayosem Keser Malchus Bereisha. He put the crown, the crown of royalty on her head. Keser and Malchus are one. There's a famous sentence, Ani Rishoin Ani Achroin Umi Balot Ayelokim. Hashem says, I'm the first and I'm the last. And without me, there's no Hashem. And the Sifrei Kabbalah bring Ani is the same letters as the word Ayin. Ayin means nothingness. Ayin is a term that's used, it's like Mo. It's the Keser. Ayin is a term that's used to refer to Keser. Ani is a term that's used to refer to the Malchus. Ani ledoi divdal. So Ayin and Ani are one. They're really one. But yet, from another perspective, from our stamp, we look at it as ten levels, ten tikkunim. We'll just finish the next paragraph and then we'll take questions. bechinas birchas hazimun b'shem. And now we'll understand the significance when we're getting ready to do birchas hamozoin and we have that pre-game, we have the zimun, and, and the question of whether we include the name of Hashem there or not. She'ein mazkirin Hashem bebirkas hazimun b'poches me'asorah. 
that in the, in the Zimun, we do not mention Hashem's name unless there are ten people present. Ki birkas hazimun hu rak bechinas heoras harotzoin biatzmoi. Because this birkas hazimun, where we say, Raboy sai mir vil invention, yehi shem Hashem avor, that's the heoras harotzoin itself. That's really a package of, will, of desire. We're not starting Birkas Hamazon. We haven't said the Bracha itself. We're only expressing our desire. We want to bless Hashem. That's Heora Sarotzon. Which is very precious. And Rabbein Ezal taught us that this Heora Sarotzon is revealed during mealtime. Al yidei klol yisoy lomais, by the worlds coming together, upper and lower world. V'yalkein, and therefore, lahazkir es Hashem bebirkas hazimun, in order to be permitted to mention Hashem's name, Eloikeinu, in the zimun, shehu heora sarotzain, which is pure heora sarotzain, lozeh tzrichin asora shochlu yachadaikor. That requires specifically at least 10 people who ate together. She'oz daiko mizgale harotzoin b'shleimus yoiser. Because that's when this he'oraz harotzoin is really revealed in an incredible high level. Alidei kloli esoy is by the bringing together of all the worlds. She'nechlolin basora daiko. Which come together when you have 10 specifically. Ki bechol habrocha is shemaskirin es Hashem, because in all the blessings that we make throughout the day, where we mention Hashem's name, ein chiddush kol kach, it's not as unusual an item. It's not as big a chiddush kemoi lahazkir es Hashem bebirkas hazimun, like mentioning Hashem's name in the zimun, which isn't even a bracha. It's not a bracha on food. Shehu bechinas heoras harotzoin. The zimun is purely a display of our desire. Ki beemes bechin ki beemes bechinas harotzoin hu lemalo mikol hashemos. This item called rotzoin, desire, yearning, is above all the spheroes. It's above all the names of Hashem. The names of Hashem are usually attributed, related to particular spheroes. This item of Ratzayin is on top of all of that. V'chol Hashemois nimshachem isham. All of the names of Hashem draw from and receive from that top, top place called Ratzayin. Rakeshezoichen l'Ratzayin chazak b'mayla nefloa ma'oid. It's only when a person is zoiche to an incredible high level of desire and yearning, azai zoichen sheyumshach kedusha shmoi mi habechina hagavoya yoiser v'yoiser. Then that enables us to draw the holiness of Hashem's name from an incredible high level, from a, a level that's much higher than that. Shesham zeharotzayin. That's where this rotzayin is. Shehu bechinas mechames, which is what the angel, what, what, what the pasuk says. What do you see? What do you know? Bechinas aye husham. That's over there. Bechinas his bechinas his galus to bring that into revelation. Bechinas maloi to bring it all the way to the level of maloi chorus kivodei. Kima shehu betachlis hahelam. Because that which is incredibly, incredibly hidden in this world, to the point where we have no ability whatsoever to understand it in any way. The only thing we can do is yearn for it. I want it, but I know it's way above me. It's way out of my reach. A certain, the highest possible connection to Hashem in a higher level world, there it's something that's revealed, that's, that's obvious. There it's Meloi. This is something we touched on before, Rabbi Nassim is clarifying it now. 
This applies when you go from one world to the next world. Umidarga la darga, from one level to the next level. Ade in soif, until infinitum. The kayodua umuvan kolze la maskilan. And as all of this is well known to those who study Kabbalah, Machshava, those Hasidus, Ubefrat al Pidvorov Hagdoshim Zal, especially based on Rabbeinazal's words, Hamedabrim is the Mokamacha, where Rabbeinazal speaks about this in other places, Ayn Sham, look over there. So the thought that Rabbeinazal Zal just presented in this last piece here was a reminder that to those. To those in elementary school, what those people in elementary school, to, to them, something is a makif. It's something that's way above and beyond their level of understanding. Advanced physics, advanced algebra. Kids in elementary school in fourth grade who just learned how to add and subtract and multiply. And you want to start, that to them is aye. That to them is something that they can't understand at all. They can say, I want to get there. I, I want to get to, I want to understand that. But they, they can't. Right now, they're incapable of being able to understand that whatsoever. Whereas to a person who's already in high school, a person who's in 11th grade, 12th grade, more advanced, to them, that's regular stuff. That's stuff that they deal with every day, those kind of calculations. So again, Rav Nosson says, showing us this concept of Aye and Meloi and how it applies on each level and how it applies from level to level. V'yaukein, and therefore, Bebirkas Hamozain, when it comes to benching, Kishoichlam Asora Yachad, when ten people ate together, Oz Daiko Meir Horotzain Beyoiser, then this light of Rotzain shines brightly to the point where it necessitates do, mentioning Hashem's name in the Zimun. To mention it, in the part of Zimun, which is wall-to-wall Ratzon. Zimun is not a bracha. Zimun is simply expressing our desire. Guys, we want a bench. Rabbi Yisai, Mervil in Benchin. To say in that piece also, to mention Hashem's name, which is revealing the Malchus, the king, the name is the Malchus. We say, So shame and Malchus go together. So by mentioning Hashem's name in the portion of Zimon, which is Ratzain, we're making that connection between Keser and Malchus, between Aye and Maloi, Bechinas Veloikim Malki Mikedem. Again, Hashem's name Eloikim is Malchus. Shehu Bechinas Hasogas Maloi. That's that lower level understanding. Shemam Shichim Me Oilam Shelemalam Imenu, which we draw light from the, the level above it. How? Alidei Horotzoin Hatakif. Through the powerful desire, hamizgale umeir al yedei asora shoch lo When when you which becomes revealed when you when you have ten people who ate together, sheoz al yedei hu achilo daiko meir harotzen kanal. Because then when these ten ate together, just by eating together alone, that activates a super high level of heora sarotzen. And once ten people ate together, this enables them to draw the Heoras Harotzain in such a powerful way to the point where we can reveal and broadcast Hashem's Malchus, Hashem's name Elokim, Elokeinu. May ha'olam shelamala from the upper world letoich harotzim to bring it. May ha'olam shelamala letoich harotzim to bring it into the piece of zimun, which is this rotzim. Sheze iker shleimus harotzim. That's the real perfection of of rotzim. When we're able to bring about the revelation of the malchus from the world above it.
of of the rotsoin. And she yiske lohoitzi me hahela melagiloi, which results in us being able to take from hidden into revealed. Vize iker kloli esoy lamois. And that's the real bringing together of all the worlds. Vize yefsha ki im basoro. And that's impossible unless you have ten. Ki zehu zehu biatsmoi hu bechinas dovor shebigdusha she'ena nema pochas miyud. This is what the Gemara is referring to when it says that there are certain things of holiness which cannot be mentioned with less than ten. Ki hu bechinas pirsum hakidusha maoi. Because here we're talking about a major, major public going public with Hashem's holiness, with the greatness of Hashem. To the point where we're bringing together Doremal and Doremato, and to the point where we're drawing through Rotzain, which is something that's above all the spheroids and all the names of Hashem of this world, Lahamshich Letoichoi has Koras Hashem. We're bringing into, into it the mention of Hashem's name, Mehabachina Vahoilam Shalamalimenu, from the world above it, from the Malchus above it. Vahovein Ma'oid Ma'oid. Rab Nasanzal says, understand this very, very well. <clears throat> because we really need to elaborate on this in order to explain this really well. And we're going to see in another two pages, Rab Nasanzal is going to begin a paragraph where he's going to say that, that it's time to try to clarify this a little more. And he's going to make it more clear. We're talking about going from world to world. He's talking about the connection of all the worlds. And one of the things he's showing us here is that the, our world, let's say the Olam Hoasia, we have the ten spheroids of the Olam Hoasia going from Keser to Malchus. <clears throat> but where does the Keser of the Olam Hoasia receive from? The answer is from the Malchus of Yetzirah from the bottom of the world above it. And this is the item that Rav Nassim Sal is pointing out here, that we're in Zimun, <clears throat> we're doing the Zimun. The Zimun is Ratzain, it's pure Ratzain. The Zimun is Keser. When we're including Elokeinu in there, is that the Elokeinu of the Malchus of Asiya? The answer is no. That's the Elokeinu of the Malchus of Yetzirah. And this is what Rav Nassim Sal said here, <clears throat> In the last few lines, Ad Shiyam Shichu Al Yidei Harotzain, to the point where we will be able through Rotzain, through that Zimun, Shehu Lemala Mikol Hashemo Shebazeh Oilam, which is above all of the spheroids in this world, which let's say is the Oilam Asiya, Laham Shech Letoichoi, to bring into that, into the Rotzain of Asiya, has Koras Hashem, the mentioning of the name of Hashem, may habechina v'ha'olam shelamalim menu, from the world above it. And this is something that's discussed in Sifrei Kabbalah, in Sifrei Hasidus, and Rab Nosson Zal discusses it in many places, where he shows us in many places this concept that you have levels and levels, and when you get here again, when a person gets to eighth grade in elementary school, on the top, we're the oldest, we're the biggest, we're the smartest. The next level is the ground level in high school. Now you're starting again from scratch. Now we're ninth graders, we're freshies, we're no nobodies, we're nothings. And yet, the ninth graders are on a higher level. The bottom of, of the high school is on a significantly higher level than the top of the lower level. So that even the Rotzain, and again, this is what we're accomplishing in that Zimun, when we have 10 people a day together, and we, have, and we do the Zimun with 10 people, and we say, Raboisai mir vilen benchen. We're turning on that light bulb called Rotzain. We want. We're activating Heorasa Rotzain, which is Keser, which is the highest, highest level. 
And then when we say, we're connecting that Ratzon, that Keser, to the Eloikenu, to the name of Hashem, to the Malchus, above it, above it, of the next world. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. It's in the next paragraph that Rav Nosson Zal says, Let's, let's explain this a little bit. Okay, but first, any questions? Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi. Welcome. Question is, um, how do we explain that certain tefillot were not orchestrated around the minyan, such as tikkun chatzot? Each thing has its own unique specialness. Even tikkun chatzot. There are people who get together to say it publicly in a, in a minyan, and, and any, usually any Dovar Shabikdusha, when it's done with a minion, has tremendous significance. It's very special. An example, the Tikkun Akloli. Tikkun Akloli does not need to be recited with a minion, and yet, when it is recited with a minion, it has a, a whole other major significance. In many Breslov shuls, the custom is that on Shabbos, on Shabbos morning, after, after davening, yeah. the whole shul says it together. And there were some people who were opposed to it. They said, this Tikkun HaKloli is related to Tikkun HaBris. That's a private thing. That's not a public issue. But in recent years, it's become accepted in just about all Breslov shuls, the beauty that on Shabbos we recite the Tikkun HaKloli Betzibur, with a minion, you know, with 10 or more people. So just about any Dovar Shebik Dusha is greater when a person says it with a minion. But there are certain things that cannot be said without a minion. Because Rav Nosson is showing us these things are in a unique category where we're making a public announcement. I'll, give you, I'll, I'll make this a little clearer. The Arizal and other Sadiqim write, Ein Melech Beloyam, that you can't have a king without a nation. All other attributes of Hashem, chesed, gvura, all the others were taught can apply even without an audience. But malchus, kingdom, authority, authority over who? Who are you an authority over? So ein melech beloyam, and beroiv am hadras melech, and the more people, the greater the, mal- the greater the melech, the greater the malchus. This is why we've mentioned that when we say kaddish, when a person passes away, when a member of the Jewish nation of this world leaves, when the Jewish, the count of Jews in this world gets diminished from 15 million to 14 million, 900,999, we say Kaddish. What are we saying in Kaddish? The word Kaddish, the word Yisgadal, the Arizal says is Tagi Dal. The crown of Hashem has been diminished. Before Hashem was king over 15 million, now he's king over one less. The Malchus of Hashem has become smaller, Kaviochel. So again, this issue, this attribute of Hashem, this Malchus, this Maloi Chol Haoretz Kivoidoi, in order to really, really bring that out, requires the minimum of 10. We're allowed to do it on a small level. Again, when I make a bracha on food, I say, Lekenu Melech Oilam. But it goes into a completely different league when we have 10 people. That's what Rav Nosson is showing us here in this whole piece we just learned. That there's small time, there's lighting a match, and there's setting off a bomb. Both are fire. Both can burn. But this is a match, and this is a, a bomb, literally. Or a whole fireplace. Amazing. Thank sure. you. A question was asked, doesn't the Keser of the Olam HaTachtain receive from the Malchus of the Elyon? The answer is yes. I believe we, we just explained that. That the Ratzain, the Ratzain, the Zimun, that we're saying, which is Heoras HaRatzain, which is above all the names and everything, by including Eloikeinu, we're connecting that Ratzain to the Malchus above it, to a level that's even above that. <clears throat> and Rav Nosson Zal is going to go into this more in the next paragraph. We didn't mention the beginning of this year, and I want to make mention of it, that today, Yud Aleph Cheshvan, is a very important day in the Jewish calendar, especially those that live in Eretz Yisrael are more conscious of it, although today with communication, once upon a time, I remember living in America, once upon a time, not a thousand years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 
never heard of the yard site of Rachel Imenu. Never heard of, of uh, uh, hardly heard of Lag Bomer. It was a, a tiny little thing. But those that live in Eretz Yisrael, and again, with today's level of communication, the world became smaller, and, and the whole world, the Jewish world, finds out that there is someone called Rachel Imenu that's buried on the crossroads of Beis Lechem and Ephrat, <clears throat> and that there are, on a, on a standard yard site, there are thousands of Jews that go there to pray. And not on the yard site, there are hundreds of Jews constantly, daily, going to this incredible, holy, significant place to pray. It's brought in Sifrei Kabbalah that Rochel is one of the symbols of the Malchus of Hashem, the kingdom of Hashem. We know that the throne of Hashem, we're told, has four legs. And again, this doesn't mean physical. We're, not, we're putting this in physical terms just to, to, that we can relate to it. But we're told that the Kisi HaKovet has four legs. And these four legs are referred to sometimes as Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, David, David HaMelech, who is referred to as the Regel Horevi of the throne of Hashem. And that's why, for example, the fourth meal on Shabbos is called Suda of David HaMelech. <clears throat> and sometimes in the Sifrei Kabbalah, we find it referred to as Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and Rochel. The word Iyar, the month of Iyar, Aleph, Yud, 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 Reish, is Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Rochel, Imenu. And there's, there's worlds, there's thousands of pages written in the Sifrei Kabbalah about Rochel Imenu, that Rochel and Leah Rochel represents the lower Shekhinah, Leah represents the upper Shekhinah. <clears throat> Rochel was buried outside, and, and Leah is buried inside. Leah is buried inside the Ma'ora Samach Pela. Rochel is buried outside, on the street, Kav Yochel it's brought, on the crossroads. That's the way it's defined in the Chumash. <clears throat> because the, the lower Shekhinah is more accessible, more available, in a sense, more revealed than the upper Shekhinah, which is referred to as Biskasya. We find Rochel Imenu's name mentioned <coughs> in several very important places in the Tefillah. For example, there's one sentence in the Tefillah that the Gemara says, a person who says this three times a day, guaranteed Olam Haba, Yodecha, Hashem, open your hands, and provide satiation, fullness, to everyone, to the entire world. And again, that Ratzon word in there, providing us with Ratzon. The first letters of Lechol Chai Ratzon spell Rochel, Rochel Imenu, who is the symbol of the Malchus, which receives from the Yodayim Shebiyama Chochmah, as we've been learning throughout this chapter, that the, the Malchus is the one that provides Parnosa and Shefa for the whole world, it receives from the Yodayim. That's this Rochel who's receiving from the, the, the Yodayim. Another place on Rosh Chodesh, I've seen it's brought in Sforim, that in the Shmon Esrei, the, of Rosh, the Shmon Esrei, the Mus of Shmon Esrei of Rosh Chodesh, begins with the words, Roshe Chodoshim Li Amchon Asoto. Hashem, you have given us Rosh Chodesh's, this great gift of Rosh Chodesh. What is Rosh Chodesh? Rosh Chodesh is the birthday of the moon, the moon which is the symbol of Malchus again, kingdom, David, Melech, Yisrael, Chai, Vekayim, all tied into the moon. The first letters of Rosh Chodeshim Liamcha spell Rochel Imenu, and I've seen it written that she was the one who wrote that tefillah. I never heard it from my Rebbe's, I've seen it written in some places that Rochel Imenu is actually the one who gave us that paragraph in the Tefillah of Rosh Chodesh. And possibly most significant, in the Zohar Kodesh, it brings the, the story that after the Churban Beis Samikdosh, there were different tzaddikim who approached Hashem, begging Hashem to forgive the Jews and to take us back. And each tzaddik was refuted. Avram Avinu, Yitzchak Avinu, Yaakov Avinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, all of them, Hashem pushed aside their arguments. And then the Zohar Kodesh says, Rochel Imenu came before Hashem, and she said, Hashem, what's your problem? What's, what's the big deal? They worshipped Avoy the Zara, they took another wife. Ooh, te- Mamish, terrible. You know what I did, Hashem? 
I'm the one who, in, who, in, who assisted my sister in replacing me. I, you know, I was supposed to be the wife of Yaakov Avinu. He wanted to marry me, and he, he made a whole agreement with me. He gave me secret codes to ensure that my daddy, Lovan, he knew who Lovan was, a liar and a thief and everything, to ensure that Lovan wouldn't trick him in any way. We set up a system of codes to guarantee that there'd be no mistake here. But then when I realized the possibility of my sister being embarrassed because I saw what my father was doing, trying to replace me by my sister, I went so far as to hide under the bed. Hide under the bed because it wasn't enough that she knew the codes. Yaakovina would recognize the voice. And Rachel Imenu, when, when Yaakov Inu asked for the codes, Rachel Imenu mentioned the codes as her sister was replacing her, taking her spot as being the wife of Yaakov Avinu. And it's because of this switch. Why did Lovan want to do this? What difference did it make to Lovan? The answer is Lovan knew that by placing Rachel, that if Leah is first, if Yosef HaTzadik is not the Bechoyer, had Yosef HaTzadik been the Bechoyer, the first firstborn, there possibly would never have happened the whole Machloikas against Yosef HaTzadik. One of the things that allowed the brothers to go against them was, who is this baby? One of the, the youngest brother, and his mother, uh, Rachel didn't marry Le- uh, Yaakov you know, until much later. This was part of Lovan's plan in rearranging things. So Rachel Imenu says, Hashem, look what I did. You're Hashem. You could do better. And the Zohar Kodesh says that was a winning argument. Hashem said, you win. Game over. The shovel, because of your zechus, your merit, I guarantee, I promise that the shovel, bonim ligvulam, that you, that, that your children will be brought back to Eretz Yisrael. There will be a gula shleima. And this is one of the reasons why Rochel Imenu, the in Tikkun Chatzois, we have two sections, Tikkun Rochel and Tikkun Leia. And, and the major one is the, the Tikkun Rochel. And this is one of the reasons why Keva Rochel is such an incredible holy place for Klal Yisrael. It's the only Kever that's mentioned in the entire Chumash, where the Pasuk says, that Yaakov Avinu buried over there, he matseves kvuras rochel ad hayoim. That's the wording in the Chumash. This is the, the stone that Yaakov Avinu put up for Rochel Imenu till today. Those words, ad hayoim, every Jew says that when we read the Torah. That till today, this is the most definite kever of Kal Yisrael where we know exactly where it is and we know that she is the one who presented the winning argument. I remember hearing from Reb Michal Zechon of Racha that, that there's a kever in, in uh, one of the Arab villages, the kever of Nosan Hanavi, which on, in Chalchul, Chalchul is one of the most dangerous places on earth for a Jew. It's one of the worst places of, of Arab terrorism. <clears throat> and, and once upon a time, it was possible to go there to visit the kever of Nosan Hanavi. But one of the reasons why people would go there specifically was because of the fact that when Adonio, when the son of Dovid Amelech, started preparing a rebellion to take over the kingdom of Dovid Amelech, either when he passes away or even during his lifetime, Nosan Hanavi is the one who approached Batsheva, the mother of Shlomo Hamelech, <coughs> and said to her, this is dangerous. This is really, really dangerous. This could destroy Klal Yisrael Chasushon. Therefore, this is what we're going to do. You're going to go to your husband, Dovid HaMelech, and you're going to start, you're going to remind him of the promise he made that your son, Shloim HaMelech, is the one who would be the future king of Klal Yisrael. And then I'll come in. While you're there, we'll coordinate in such a way that I'll come in and fill in whatever's missing from your words. The wording there in the Navi, I will fill in whatever is missing. And this is one of the reasons why the kever of Nosan Navi is Choshuv, <coughs> because again, he's the one who said, whatever is missing from your tefillah, I'll fill in, that kind of thing. But getting, getting back to Rochel Imenu, this, we, we are in such a, Rav Nosan Zal speaking about Ha'aloma, Hastara, where some of the holiest places, the Gemara says, <coughs> that during the time of the Beis Hamikdash, 
a person would go to the Beis HaMikdosh to see Hashem. The greatest revelation of the Shekhinah was in the Beis HaMikdosh. Sholosh Pamen Bashono Yeiroe Kol Tzchurches Pnei Hashem Alekecha. Today we don't have a Beis HaMikdosh. Where do we go to see Hashem? The answer is our Bote Kneisiyos and Bote Midrashos. They're called Mikdash Mat, miniature Beis HaMikdoshes. The shuls and the, the yeshivas and especially, especially the Kivrei Tzadikim. We remember again from the, <clears throat> the case of Kolev ben Yefuna that Kolev went to the Mars to Kivrei Tzadikim to be Mispalel. We hope that on, on this very important day, the fact that we remember Rochel Imenu, the fact that we speak about her, Rabbi Nezal says in a chapter on the Kutimran, wherever a person's mind is, that's where the person really is. Because the real essence <coughs> of a person is not their body, it's not their fingers. When I say, I want to do this, or I don't like this, who's the I? Is it my fingernail? Is it my middle finger? Is it my right hand or my left hand? Which is the I? All the Sforim explain, the I is the essence of the person. The I is the neshama of the person. The machshava of the person. Sheha neshama shebemoichi. So the, it, wherever a person's mind is, that's where the person is. And a person today on this yard side, we can mekasher our mind as if we're actually standing by Kevarachel inside being mispal of air and hope that her zechus together with the zechus of all the tzaddikim and all the tzidkaniyos should help Kral Yisrael come out of this halama, this hastara, this, this blockage, this magefa, this dever, Today is also Bahab. Those who are aware of Bahab, today is the second day of, of the set of Monday, Thursday, Monday, where some people fast, some people fast day half a day. There's special slichos that are said in some of the breastless shuls in the morning. <clears throat> the slichos for Sheni, Hamishi, and in the slichos, if you pay attention to the words, one of the most important messages that's being said there is, Look at our situation today, Hashem, that once upon a time there were tzaddikim who could turn over your decrees, who could fix everything and anything. And today we're at a loss, we're at a major, major loss, that all the tzaddikim are gone or hidden. And, and who can, who's going to defend us today? But we know, we believe that by mentioning the names of the tzaddikim and the zchus of the tzaddikim, Elio Anavi, in his tefillah, when he wanted his tefillah to be answered, he said, Zechor la Avram le Yitzhak or Yaakov. Hashem, even though he wasn't at the Mars Amapela, he said, Hashem, remember the schus of Avram Yitzhak Yaakov. Moshe Rabbeinu, when he wanted his prayer to be answered, when he was davening for Hashem to forgive the Jews for the Egel Azov, it's written that he was davening, davening, nothing happened. When he said the magic words, Zechor le Avram le Yitzhak or Yaakov. Hashem, remember the schus of Avram Yitzhak Yaakov. The next Pasuk says, Vayinochem Hashem al Horo Hashem forgave. Right after that Pasuk. So by mentioning the Zechus of Rechle Menu and by showing that we know that we don't have that much merit, we're relying completely on the Zechus of the great Sadiqim and on Hashem's kindness, we hope that we'll be Zechut to see the Gula Shleimah, the coming of Moshiach, Moshiach ben David, <coughs> ben Heira Biamenu. Together, together with Moshiach ben Yosef, both of them, the combination. Any questions, please? Can I ask a question? Please. And good morning, Rabbi. Quick question. Um, so, um, everything's locked. The Kavar and Siddiquim are locked. The base connected. There's so many regulations. I, I can't believe what's going on over here. How am I going to relate to this? I mean, everything's locked today. In today's time, I don't have really have enough. I mean, we have you, Bo Hashem. We're very honored. But I, 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 it's not no gay yet. It, it's so frustrating. And no one knows that. No one has any clue. No one knows what they're saying. Everyone's contradicting. I just have to be nice and smile and listen to whatever and be nice. No muck locusts. Can you just elaborate on this? I'm sorry for drawing this out. No, no. This, this is very, very, very important. This, this is, this is, you're, you're giving an accurate description of what's going on. And again, it's, it's, you're quoting the Chumash. 
It says in the Chumash that when we get to the end of days, Vanoichi haster astir esponai. I will hide, hide my face. Double hide. Hastora shebetoy hastora. Masks. Right? We're hiding the faces. You're supposed to, I remember my Rebbe, Reb Michal Zechonavrocha, one time when I was getting ready to go to America on a trip, and I came to see him at Chatzois. It was, I was privileged. The plane was leaving three or four in the morning, and I wanted to see him, and he said, come, see me at Chatzois, which is prime time, the best time possible. And I came to see him, and he spoke to me for a few minutes, and one of the things he said to me, he said to me, you don't know why you're going. You don't know which person needs to see your face. And that alone will be a certain message for them. That alone will be something for them. And, and today, it's not just the shuls and the, the Jewish face, the beauty of a Jewish face, looking into a Jewish face. That alone is, is looking at Hashem, is looking into the Beis Hamikdash, the Penei Hashem, which is in, in every single Jew. Hastora, Hastora, Hastora. And, and, Rabbi, and we're touching on this now. This, there's two messages. A person has to have, we have two pockets. We need to fight with two weapons, two hands. One weapon is IA, that sometimes when we're feeling that the, I, I don't see Hashem anywhere. Where in the world is Hashem? That's this battle cry, IA, Mekoyim Kavoyde, Hashem, where are you? Where are you? And during those times that I'm, I remember and I realize that Hashem is here, He is here, He's hidden, but He's here, then it's Maloy Cholor, it's Kevoidoy. Then I scream, Hashem, I know you are, you can hide, you can hide. I don't care if you hide with 600 masks, we know you're here, and we know nothing is happening here without you being in full control. Why is He hidden? Because of us, because of us. We, it's up to us to improve ourselves to do tshuva. My Rebbe Rav Rosenfeld, Zechron once asked his rabbi, Rabbi Avram Sternhartz, Rabbi Avram Kochavlev, he said, why isn't Hashem, why isn't Moshiach here? Why hasn't Moshiach come already? And the response was, he is here. He has come already. The problem is, he keeps coming towards us and we keep moving away from him. We, if we simply stop running away from Hashem, will connect, game over. And, and this is where it's, it's up to us to show, again, there's a major portion of the world that denies the existence of Hashem completely. There, no, there's atheists, agnostics, there's you know 360 flavors of denial of Hashem on all levels and denial of tzaddikim, of the effectiveness of tzaddikim existing and whether they do exist or don't exist, whether they can do anything. Whereas we have to strengthen ourselves in knowing Hashem does exist and Hashem is alive and well and the power of tzaddikim is still in the world. Otherwise, the world would cease to exist. And, and by connecting, trying within all of this hiddenness to acknowledge Hashem, every time we make a bracha to make Baruch HaTo Hashem Elekeinu you can't hide from me, Hashem. I know you exist. And I'm going to say it a million times a day. Hashem, Hashem, Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Emir Hashem. By a person showing this recognition of Hashem and recognition of the, the power of tzaddikim, that Hashem would never leave a generation completely orphaned without the tzaddikim to guide us. Elamai, just like Hashem is hiding, the, the Gemara says, Dayoi Levi Kitliois Karaboi. The servant doesn't act differently than his master. Hashem is hiding, so that tzaddikim are hiding too. Where are they hiding? In their sforim, at their grave sites, at, at their, in their students. And it's our mission to seek, to seek. We say it every morning in Haidu, dirshu Hashem, the, the word dirshu. The word dirshu means seeker. The word beis hamedrish. We go to a beis hamedrish. Why, why is it called a beis hamedrish? It's for seekers. What, when do you, what, what do you mean, what's seek? You remember the game hide and seek? When something is hidden, you have to seek it. If it's obvious, there's no seek, there's nothing to seek, it's right in front of you. But it's because Hashem is hidden. The word olam, the actual word olam, world, is from the Hebrew word ha'alama, which means hidden. So this is the reality, 
and, and Rabbeinu Sal, Rabbi Nelson Sal, give us the tools and the guidance to know what we need to do in this situation. So we're playing hide and seek. I wasn't so great as a child. I don't think I'm that much better now. You, I mean, you, what am I going to do? I feel like a loser. There's still time to improve. Talk to friends, talk to, you know, in all seriousness. That's the game. That's the name of the game. It's hide and seek. It's a reality. That's, this is the real definition of, of, the, of the world that we're in. It's halama. The most important, the most significant things in this world are hidden. And the more significant it is, the more hidden it is. And it's up to people not to be distracted by the layers and layers of sheker. The sheker is obvious. That's, that's what's right in your face. The satan is, is checking account. It's, in, it's called instant gratification, they call it, right? Whereas the emes, the truth, Hashem, that's, that's not instant gratification. That takes faith. That takes seeking and it takes a lot of faith, and it takes a lot of perseverance. Thank you very much, Rabbi Wishing everybody a wonderful day. We should be zeicha to all the Yeshua's and Rafuas that we need on an individual level, on a public level. Klal Yisrael should be zeicha to all the Yeshua's that we need. All the best. In the next year, Rav Nosel, it begins with the words, Olavoy or Inyan. So things were a little cloudy today. Rav Nosel is about to make it much clearer in the next piece. Don't miss it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rav Nosel. Thank you, Rav Nosel. All the best. All the best.